Welcome to a legendary and special about five terrifying beasts in medieval folklore. Medieval beast Jerry's have recently become a subject of fascination among scholars and the general public. If you think ancient mythology is strange, that same strangeness abounds in the medieval thought world. Medieval bestiaries, or books of beasts, list real animals alongside more fanciful beings, some of which are quite terrifying. First, there is an African flying serpent called the Eaculus. Its name came from the Latin word for javelin. A Roman poet named Lucan wrote that when the Eaculus went on the hunt, it waited in a tree tall enough to give it a view of the surrounding countryside. Once a suitable meal came into view, the creature hurled itself at the luckless animal, much like a javelin. Supposedly only the stag would be safe from the Eaculus, for smoke that poured from its antlers would fend off the terrible serpent though one wonders where the smoke came from. Secondly, the Bonacon has been described as far back as Pliny the Greek. Like other fanciful creatures described by ancient Greek historians, it became a staple of medieval bestiaries. Depicted as having the head of a bull on the body of a horse, the Bonacon also sported horns that curled backwards, which made them all but useless. However, the creature had another and far more horrifying defense mechanism. When the Bonacon felt threatened, its bowels would erupt and cover everything in the area with dung. The dung both smelled terrible and burned everything it touched. Most illustrations of the Bonacon show it giving would-be pursuers an explosive shower of feces. Today it is thought that the Bonacon is based on large hoofed animals like bison. It is also possible the whole story grew from a single sighting of a terrified animal losing control of its bowels while being pursued. Third is another fearsome serpent called the Dipsa. Lucan said that the Dipsa became one of 17 different types of snakes created when Perseus cut off Medusa's head. Blood dripping from the severed head stump dripped in different places as the hero traveled. From each droplet, a new snake erupted from the earth, and the Dipsa erupted in the deserts of Libya. Dipsas had incredibly strong venom, which caused victims to go mad as their flesh burned to a crisp. The snakes are also cursed to be forever thirsty, which does little to improve their temper. Lucan claimed that a friend of his traveled through Libya when he came across a tomb with the image of a dipsa upon it. Its fangs sunk into a man's foot, and a group of women poured water over the unfortunate man to stop the agony of his flesh burning alive. An inscription on the tomb claimed he had been bitten while stealing the snake's eggs, a tasty treat, but one that came at an awesome price. Fourth comes the Lucrata, a horse-like creature said to come from either India or Ethiopia. It grew to be the size of a donkey with cloven hoofs, much like Satan. Supposedly half stag and half lion, Pliny claimed that the Lucrata sprang from the union of an Ethiopian lioness and a hyena. It had both the strength of a lion and the cleverness of a hyena, a truly terrifying combination. Its mouth ran from ear to ear, and a Lucrotch's jaw instead of teeth had a single bony ridge that would never grow dull. The Lucrata could mimic human speech and would call out in the night to lure unsuspecting victims into its clutches. Fifthly and finally, the Hydrus is said to live along the Nile River, where it prowled through the water in search of crocodiles. When it found a sleeping crocodile, the Hydrus covered itself in mud to make itself slippery and hurled itself into the sleeping crocodile's mouth. Once inside, the Hydrus burrowed through the beast and ate through its internal organs. Finally, it tore its way out of the crocodile's belly, killing it. 
Isidore wrote about the Hydrus in the 7th century, but it would not be until the 12th century that St. Anthony of Padua likened the creature's habits to Christ and his apostles. He wrote that Christ too bathed in mud and challenged evil only to come out alive at the other side. Some bestiaries described it as a bird, while others depicted it as a snake, and some reported it being confused with the Hydra of the Hercules legend. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe, and if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.